Hi everyone, uh, my name is Samir Singh Jaini, and in today's webinar, we'll largely focus on uh, some aspects of product management. One of the critical one is how do you manage you? How do you understand what is the life cycle your product is in? Now, a lot of times people start uh, measuring and figuring out what they have done in their career with respect to uh, a product which is already let's say matured in life cycle. So you would see a lot of people failing in or, or finding it challenging to run a product when they join a startup. And I'll tell you in this session today why it is different from a conceptualization perspective to actually execution perspective. So I'm, I've lived my life where uh, in, in, at one point in time I was, was in a very matured organization with a matured product. And I then jumped to uh, set up a bank, say a, say a Kotak bank in my career. And I realized in that journey, things change differently. You have to conceptualize things differently, understand the customer expectation differently. And it is you don't have a baseline to work in. So a lot of things and thought processes are very different uh, when you look at it. So in today's session, we will talk about that. And second part, which is customer centricity. Um, now, uh, obviously, I'll talk, talk you through on what we are talk, talking about centricity. What does it mean? Why it matters a lot? Uh, and how it is simple, but yet not uh, understood by most people uh, and what kind of mistakes people make. So I'll try to assure that both the, both the sides are well understood. Now, this is a quick background about the company and myself. Uh, my name is, as I said, Samit Singh Jenny, and I'm part of the Deal 50. Uh, we have been running this organization for almost six years now. Uh, and, and of course, uh, within the consulting business, within the digital finance, so we, that's where we operate. We work with a lot of entities and large large entities in the, in the market, including banks, including networks, including a lot of people. I think there's some of our customers uh, I'm showing this slide. Now, the reason why, uh, what, what whatever we are going to talk about is more experiential by nature. So some of the pointers which we talk about or session we will talk about is largely linked to whatever we have learned on the ground in the market. So that you will get a perspective of what, what works, what doesn't work. What are the challenges in executing what we execute, right? So I think a lot of thing is actually hands-on uh, ground level knowledge on building products and journeys for people. What we are good at, uh, we work uh, on setting up uh, setting up digital strategy for people, uh, building roadmap for people, building complete product journeys from a, from a conceptualization to actually execution, running large programs. Uh, and also a lot of times people don't know which platform to buy for building their product, what journeys to buy. So from start to end, we work on. Of course, uh, this is largely valid for uh, advisory services, valid on one side for banks. But let's say when a lot of early stage come, uh, people come, then for them, from a what is the business model, uh, for business to be done, what is the, the GTM, what are the products, what is the product build up, uh, what kind of partnership they will do, all of that is what we bring to the table uh, on the ground. And of course, we do a lot of work on open banking, uh, security, and research as well. So that's largely us. Uh, and of course, uh, this content, whatever we are talking, we primarily uh, train a lot of corporates in the market, uh, including people like Perfeos or JB Morgan or Airbnb or Flipkart or NPCI. And this training content is largely what we have been able to take to the market with their idea that, okay, if you want to build culture, you have to ensure that everybody has the same baseline. And some of these sessions are used by the market to understand the baseline better. And that's where we learn. And of course, we, we train a lot of colleges as well. Now, this particular series, uh, which is part of our uh, uh, Bharat Fintech uh, uh, Summit series, uh, this will basically, we, we are doing it on every Thursday. Uh, last Thursday, we did a session, uh, last, last Thursday, we just did a session on basic concept of product management. Uh, if you want to look at that, uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get, show it to you maybe later. But basically, on our YouTube channel, uh, you should be able to see this content as well. So on YouTube channel, you should be able to see uh, the previous session where we had taken a session on <clears throat> basic concepts of product management and emerging growth. In today's session, we'll talk about customer centricity and product lifecycle management. Uh, next uh, session, which will happen mostly next week, we'll talk about product management processes and price economics. So how do you price your product? What is the process of product management from where, from idea to execution? How do you go about doing it? And then we'll get into how do you ensure that uh, uh, in terms of uh, digital transformation, how the product has to change and what are the key success factors. So of course, uh, we have tried to contain within this uh, almost three, three and a half hour session across board four days. Hopefully it is useful for, for you. 
this will be followed by our session on digital transformation and uh, also on entrepreneurship. If many of you are looking at uh, uh, transforming your own organization, uh, I think digital transformation series will be very relevant for you. And this will be followed by, as I said, uh, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs and we realize their challenges as well. So we'll do an entrepreneurship series as well. So again, all free for all of you to join. Um, and, and that's largely what we had. Now, in terms of a quick recap of last week's session, which we had taken, um, I think from a, a lot of times people get confused on uh, banking side, what products can be. Now, uh, a, a one card, which is a digital card, is, is definitely a product. Uh, same as the home loan, same as the Slack, same as the Instagram. So all of them, uh, any any product or service which is getting sold uh, is, is technically a product. And you need to make sure that you, from a build start stage to execution stage to support stage, you manage each factor, right? For example, one of the points which we'll talk about is how do you ensure that customer has good access to your, your platform and has can actually manage uh, his experience better. Now we'll talk about later, but uh, generally I'm giving you our view. Uh, we ourselves uh, are, is, are, are primarily a consulting company, right? But if you look at it, a lot of people do get confused on what we do because the the, the way they, we approach our website work is not clear. So we, we are also on our side learning that uh, uh, simplicity has to be brought to the table. People should know what we do and all of that. So I think just pointer here, everything, be it consulting, be it product, be it service, everything is a product. We just need to ensure that we treat it from start till end really well. And also uh, one of the key points which I keep telling to people is that whatever what brought you here will not take you there. So which means that uh, the product also has to keep innovating with the change in the market. Now, if what we spoke last week was about what are the key components uh, of the product? So typically you will have a long-term uh, vision of the product uh, and, and a mission for that. So broad level, what you want to do with the product to do in the market, uh, then you will. this will be linked to uh, high level goals. Now those goals can be linked to uh, what are the key services you want to offer to the customer. It can be even at a broad level, uh, not a specific level, at a broad level. You may also mean that what kind of customers we want to engage, uh, what kind of revenues you want to make, what kind of profits you want to make, what is the, what is the cross-sell possibility there. So you can come back with a lot of uh, high-level goals for that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it will be linked to a set of features like epics, and then you have followed by the specific features and a user story. So user story is what on the ground you'll see more or less, abhi ye develop kar lete hai, now we let's develop something more. So it's iterative by nature. And also a lot of times product does change in direction as, and we are in a regulated environment. So one of the key point is why you do all of that in a banking domain and a fintech domain, uh, you need to assure that compliance is linked to the regulator, be it RBI, be it SEBI, they're also, always considered and, uh, uh, and, and and taken care of, yeah? So I think this is very, very crucial. Uh, you need to manage that out, right? Yeah, so uh, let's look at uh, what makes a product successful, right? Uh, I think we spoke about that it should address the customer needs first, right? I think uh, if you look at the previous avatar of, of savings account, uh, and I want you to just have an empathy, but just can you put up the TV please, yeah? So um, uh, I, I listen, for example, uh, savings product. Now, savings product was a CASA account, CA account, or SAR account, savings account, in which you will typically look at from a banking product perspective, you will look at just, uh, say, uh, uh, account in which the money can come in and out. Uh, there'll be some controls, and then we will say, uh, just TV off. Oh, yeah. So uh, what I want, so for example, that savings account is just basically a basic place where money comes in and out, and there's some interest rate linked to it, and maybe at best you would have given some internet banking to it. But the way Jupiter brought new age phenomena to it, saying that how do you experience a savings account differently? How do you ensure that engagement levels are different? The FD itself is treated very differently. So I think same product can come back in a new avatar, which is what Jupiter has done. Or maybe credit card, which I find it very, very difficult to use. I, I have tried all banking cards and I realized that the cards were built saying, I have built a product and you consume. Instead of figuring out what the customer needs, for example, it's so tough to figure out the reward mechanisms of the, of the credit card. So I think this is this is the new world where uh, some of these are getting defined and customer needs are taking, uh, taking care of. There's a lot of 
a thought process on iterative development, right? So I think when we meet our customers, a lot of customers do come back and ask, say, yeah, sara cheeze ek, ek hi phase mein kar denge. Let me just, uh, let us just attempt to get everything in one shot, right? That's not going to be, uh, going to work, right? So you need to ensure that you do an iterative development. Right now we are working and potentially working on one of the largest initiative on the retail side and one of the largest initiative on MSME side. In both the places, the, our focus and has been and will remain is to ensure that it's iteratively done. We do something, validate, come back, we do something, validate, we do something, validate, and keep scaling from there. Uh, how do you ensure that the product is uniquely positioned, right? For example, uh, if you do, uh, you're not able to position yourself, you will become V2. And when you are V2, uh, the primary, the only thing which you will access is, 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 the, is the cost of it, which typically puts you in cost pressure. So for example, for us, um, our service and consulting is primarily positioned for banks and fintechs and in an area where which is our choice. We are, we are basically saying from digital finance perspective, anything which you want to digitize in banking and finance, uh, in wealth area, talk to us. We will help you in building it up. But that is the positioning we have taken. Uh, and that's also, we are also taking a premium position there. So that's saying that if there is a critical complicated activity, talk to us. For a BAU, I'm sure you will find other players for that, right? So positioning is critical. That ensures that your pricing is actually well managed for. Otherwise, you will underprice yourself, undercut because there'll be a lot of other guys who will come back with a cheaper price. We don't have to exist in that market. You have to keep, as, and, and those both are clear. Uh, one is the uh, product positioning, where it is positioned. And of course, you need to continuously uh, uh, drive uh, and create in, uh, differentiation. So uh, whenever somebody says, why your service and will be different from somebody else, you should have a fairly clear answer on it. Why this is different? And you will see that all the time in the market, for example, from my experience perspective, the one card experience or a current experience is different from others. So you need to keep uniquely uh, identifying yourself what you stand for and keep uh, uh, sort of uh, double clicking on it, improving upon it. Another thing is that when you do changes, uh, the scope of change you will do may be minor, may have a larger impact. I'm not saying it should have a small impact, but important that when we do the changes, it should be incremental by nature. Uh, you should define early success metrics, right? For example, when you launch a platform, are we talking about uh, 10,000 used to, users to be onboarded uh, or a million users to be onboarded? Or from a customer experience perspective, uh, your, your, your NPS should be some so much XYZ. If you are saying that the cost will come down, you have to define the cost for that. If the customer onboarding uh, is, is happening at maybe uh, 500 rupees per user, are we saying because of new innovation or new changes, it will be brought to 400. So you need to define the success metrics early on. Otherwise, if you don't do it later on, you start rationalizing for it, saying that, I think that's the challenge you have. Speed and timely launch, I think uh, we keep pushing for it ourselves that when you think about a concept, we must reach out to the market rather fast so that we can actually get gain some traction, gain some knowledge and skill from there. Uh, if you, it's not, it doesn't mean that you should not prep for it. You should prep for it. You should get ready for it. Your product should be a minimum lovable product. Customers should love it. But at the, at the core of it, timeliness is as important as well. And of course, uh, through the journey, uh, keep engaging with the customer. I can tell you that uh, we also gone a lot of times wrong. And that happens when uh, sometimes because of whatever reason, we take eyes off the customer and you can't do that. Customer engagement and feedback. So I'll give you a very simple example. Recently, I, I met a customer along with, with, with my co-founder. And uh, we realized that they had a challenge uh, uh, in, in working with us. And I, I this was a feedback from their, their side thing. This could have been different, right? And then I loved it because he was fair. Uh, the person was fair. The, the, the customer was fair. And taking that feedback, meeting the customer all the time and, and getting that sense of what, what is working, what is not working is crucial for the, for the, for the service to grow or product to grow. Uh, in terms of uh, digital product management, what are the roles uh, they have to focus on? Customer and customer sensitivity, understanding their needs, development, sales, legal, finance, research, marketing, support. Now, because the product management is at the center of the entire uh, entire uh, journey, entire experience, they are the ones who have to coordinate with everybody else. A lot of times, product managers, or maybe I'll tell you, classical product manager or a bank would typically work on the MI side. He would have a hardly any touch with the technology team, he would be largely a sales support guy. 
uh, would not know much about legal. The moment any legal issue comes, he'll pounce on, uh, or rather uh, uh, give it back to the, to the legal team. Finance, he would not know. Research, obviously, uh, far away. Marketing, uh, limited. But they would do because whatever it takes to do sales. Digital marketing, not at all. Support, maybe some cases. Uh, customer, uh, they would, wouldn't really meet the customer because product was standard. We have a savings account, we have an FD, and we have channels to work on. So there's a that's a dissonance issue which we had in the previous avatar. But I think uh, I have been doing this work for 20 years. I can tell you that this is how I have envisaged, but uh, a lot of people were not able to place our roles. Uh, saying that, so I have been at times called a product ma project manager. I have been sometimes called, I don't know, um, uh, maybe something very awkward roles, right? I remember my role was in process reengineering group because there was no designated structure for for a digital product manager. There was not even concept there. I'm talking 23, 24 years back. So let's come back to product life cycle. And very, very important that you understand what is the life cycle your product is in. A lot of the times we make mistakes here. Uh, and, and sort of start applying. So, for example, um, banking generically is a mature product, right? Completely mature product. Uh, you have a scenario where a uh, savings account or current account is fully developed. We know how it looks like. And therefore, somebody from a banking domain, when he joins a early stage startup, just gets lost, just gets lost because they will try to define saying that, boss, I need this structure, that structure, already running product. But when you're introducing product, the same concept doesn't work, right? One of the reasons why uh, why we have chosen not to hire a consultant from a from a big organization is because I've been told and I've experienced that uh, their expectation would be that they'll start from not scratch. They'll start somewhere here saying that, can we have a run, running practice? And I come and, and scale up from there. But where we are, we are a journey of build up. So we are at a journey where our growth phase has just started. So from an introduction perspective, Lastly, it's a, it, the product manager has to act like a like an entrepreneur uh, or an entrepreneur has to figure out what the needs are. At this stage, uh, normally once you conceptualize and build the product, uh, you will have the initial the sales doesn't happen easily, right? Of course, there's for every chat GPT, uh, there are millions of products which will not work. Chat GPT itself has taken a lot of time to come here in multiple of that. Uh, there is non existent of minimal, minimal profit, profit. So initial stage, when you launch a product, there are no customers. Nobody is bothered about your what you are working on, uh, and 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 the branding is also not there. So what you're doing is you are spending a lot of effort, energy, but very limited revenue. Now, if you are a founder startup, you will do digital marketing. You will burn a lot of capital, but the growth will still be slow because customers. Uh, I mean, your brand is not established. Your product is yet not known. How will it work, right? And and that's how the initial journeys are. If you're in B2B business, even more difficult, right? For example, you are you have built a new core banking platform. Now that core banking platform will be, it is, you would have done a, a MVP for it, which means that you may have developed only the current account side of it uh, or a savings account side of it. You were, and you would have, you have done, maybe if you're doing a digital uh, a core core platform, you would have added a UPI or any of the RTGS inbound outbound, you would have done nomination to it. So you've done a basic product without a lot of bells and whistles. And therefore there will not be enough customers to pick it up. Somebody says, okay, which product are you buying? Okay, I'm trying to buy, let's say, uh, Movado core banking platform, right? Uh, now, nobody knows Movado core banking platform. So therefore, people will not buy. So there is a lot of challenges of sales. This is where uh, even the sales guy find difficult. You you hire a guy from a mature organization and try to sell, ask him to head sales for uh, for a introductory stage of uh, product. He will he or she will find very very difficult to manage because they're used to just brand using the brand for for sales. Now comes the next one, which is growth. The product is already picked up, uh, and and the, the the scale up is happening. This is where the stage we are getting in, where the scale up is happening, the profit levels are improving, the people uh, people are started liking it, referring it us. So I think growth is stage uh, very different thought process. What do you need to do? What kind of iterations you need to do to the product? And, and also I believe that during growth stage you will always find a I would say a hero product or hero service. And can can then they take priority and maybe you can deprecate other products and services as well. So I think growth stage has a very different mindset and thought process. Um, when you get into mature state, uh, when the product is already sold and stabilizing, uh, it is not growing at a rapid pace. 
at that point of time, what do you do? Uh, and, and how do you ensure that you continue to uh, stabilize or rather at least improve the products and uh, or improve my minor changes and ensure that your products, uh, your, your revenues do not dwindle? That's a very tough job, very, very tough job uh, because you, you get used to by the time they say, okay, SHL, the, the, the economy grows as, as a, grows as 6%, my product is growing as 6%, my competitor is growing as 6%, I'm also growing. So I think it's a bit of a mindset issue. This is where you need to get maybe a bit more entrepreneurial and try to do more experiences so that it does not go down. Because if it goes down, your product will uh, eventually die, right? That's that's not what you are... Just one second. That's what not, not what you are looking for, right? So I think during decline stage, what do you need to do and bring it back? So maybe you need to uh, repurpose the product, rebuild the product, or come back with a new avatar, whatever it takes, right? And sometimes product have to be killed as well. I mean, a lot of times I realize that in my banking world, uh, the bank will have, let's say, a plethora of products, right? And all of them will hold, some of them will hold some accounts, some of them will hold maybe 100 accounts, but none of them are, 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 are really gaining traction, but nobody's there to deprecate. So there has to be a thought process saying that, okay, at some point in time, you want to kill the product, please go ahead and kill it because Otherwise, it will have a, a unhealthy impact on other businesses or other products you have at the same point in time. Uh, in terms of, uh, and, and well, if you guys have any question, please uh, raise on the chat. Uh, I'll try to answer if I can. If not, uh, I'll pick up those questions and maybe come back with the responses later on. Let, uh, please, please go ahead and ask your question as well. So let's go ahead with the with 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 early stage product where it just got rolled out. Maybe. Uh, Ricker is a new product or Hyperface is a new uh, credit card platform as well. Uh, now, in both the cases, they have just come in and they're doing a good job. It's not that their product is bad. It's an absolutely good job. Uh, early stage, a lot of investment has happened. Uh, but at this stage, um, the, the the how do you go to the market? This is the stage where you see uh, pricing is, is cost plus as best or sometimes very, very low. Because, because the cust early adopters are not even there. Uh, we will have the first innovators potentially for saying, okay, let me experiment something uh, out there. And I'm sure uh, both of them will be, will move to a growth stage rather soon. Uh, that comes to our sales size is low. We have few customers here and there. Cost, cost plus customer is very high because pre-sales cost, the engagement cost can be very, very high in this stage. You need to ensure that your branding and, 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 and thought process is known to the market. Profit obviously you will not be there. So you will be technically, if you're not, if you're bootstrapped, obviously you will be burning, trying to ensure that you're you're burning as less capital as possible and go slow on the journey. Uh, but if you're funded, you would you would be burning capital to get that uh, scale up as well. And of course, uh, at this stage, it's possible that if you are not doing a me too product, okay, if you are not going to do a me product, do product, there'll be no competition. If you're doing a me too product, then of course you will deal with competition as well. So at this stage, a new product is coming in the market. No, nobody is there. Nobody else has done it. So this is how it will look. Maybe you are also there are also possibilities that you are building your own uh, category, right? So you come back with a new product and you are building a new category, and then that takes a very different thought process. For example, when we launched um, six years back uh, as a fintech consulting firm or digital finance consulting firm, setting up that concept that uh, I'm talking about 2017, uh, talking about fintech and digital finance consulting, saying our job is to build your journey, strategy, processes, all digital. It was very, very difficult to communicate. Very difficult to communicate that banks would need this advice. But at, as things stand today, people uh, people understand what we stood for, and therefore we are reaping that benefit. So it's a link to what situation you are in. I'm trying to link to my, my either my customer customer base or my own experience because otherwise it's very difficult to. It looks like a presentation, which is which is uh, what it is, right? Easy to understand. Yes, I like how, but करने में मुश्किल होता है. It does take a lot of effort. In fact, uh, the energy levels you spend in this period is enormously high enormously high i mean a uh, lot of times when you come from a from a, from a stable business where uh, if, for example if you were to come from a mature business if you are coming from a mature business you enter here you would be surprised and shocked at the kind of energy you need to put through uh, but anyway let's move let's ensure that let's ensure, let's see that if your product you have done enough effort now it is actually moving to a growth stage now at the growth stage uh, typically cred cred is in the growth stage it has done a lot of work the market has accepted it the product 
a uh, lot of people are coming on onboarding and scaling maybe it, you, you, i won't put them in mature stage because that stage is slightly different but they are they are able to penetrate the market well very very well uh, the 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 acceptance is there sales is easy people actually are downloading so so for example from a digital perspective a lot of downloads are happening organically you know are not spending money on organic on that money of course there'll be maybe 50 50 ratio 50% is paid and 50% is digital uh, or uh, organic that 50% which is paid originally you may be spending 1000 bucks per customer now that cost would have come to maybe 400 or 300 rupees and therefore the possibility that you can actually start making on uh, uh, revenue on on that customer increases uh, profits obviously are are showing some level of increase uh, or a heavily funded company may not be showing profit at this stage because they may be actually uh, burning capital to reach to the higher uh, trajectory as well. So very different from a uh, same growth stage can be defined differently for a very highly heavily funded company to a, a, a I would say a low funded or a bootstrap company because growth would mean differently. For example, if you are you have raised hundreds of million dollars, you need to spend a lot of money and, and gain traction and ensure that you are a sort of a you have a complete control on the market and you are the early movers advantage taken care of. But if you're a bootstrap, you will be careful about burning and saying, okay, I'll still position myself as a boutique firm or boutique solution or all of that and wait for some more time for revenues to get generated because those revenues which are generated are put back into business. Uh, the profit is put back into business for growth and, and therefore the growth will be slightly more tapered, but it scales. For example, Zorodha has gone through that scale for a period of time. Now it is bigger than everybody else in the market. So it depends on how you sort of look at it. And of course, at this stage, uh, you will start seeing competition as well uh, in the market because you've grown, your business model is known and all of that. And people are start looking at you seriously and start attacking your business. But technically, let's say account aggregator. Now, for so many, so many years, account aggregators were in a stage where they were not getting any customers because uh, the adoption levels were low and few customers have taken it. But now a stage where uh, more and more companies are, are adopting it from but they would have taken uh, maybe a year to reach X number, but that number X number is now taking uh, maybe maybe a 15 days or 20 days to reach. That's how, as you scale, uh, a sort of growth happens. Right, let me see if there are any questions, no questions as of now. Um, please go ahead and raise your question if you have anything to sort of ask, please. Now, uh, in terms of maturity side, well, let's say, for example, uh, a guru or a zero or even bureaus, uh, they are at a stage where they're mature, uh, the business is running, it's scaling as well. So mature stage, if you're still unique, you may still be able to make more money. But at this stage, you would want to do a bit of a marketing modification. You wouldn't want to change things too hard, right? You know that business is going good. Um, the things are right. You are, you are scaled up as well. You would do minor changes to the, to the product. You will not try to rebuild the product if that be so. The customer acceptance is there. Your product is really optimal and you're just uh, tinkering with it a little bit, uh, maybe on on the branding perspective, you're a bit more focused, or or maybe re, uh, 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 maybe on the on the on the on the branding side, you will go and do more communication differently, more subtly, and all of that. But at this stage, you're not able, you're not trying to uh, burn yourself down to scale further. You know that you have reached a stage of maturity, the growth is there, revenues are good. You don't need to to burn yourself down to support sort of support this. At this stage, uh, and this is a stage which is very, very difficult, right? For example, this stage uh, recently happened to uh, to uh, uh, lending on, on top of wallets, right? Suddenly the market comes and, and RBI comes and says, this is not possible. Or the reason, the way UPI came, uh, wallets went through this decline stage. So these are difficult stages. At this point of time, you may want to take a pivot or you may want to look at dramatic changes. For example, I don't know, <laughs> Uh, is it the right example or not? But maybe uh, Twitter is going through this process. It's not doing well, or maybe the changes are happening. And suddenly, uh, uh, it, the, there's this dramatic change in, in, in direction and figuring out, okay, customer tastes have changed, activity has changed, revenues are changing. And therefore, can I dramatically cut costs, which is what Elon Musk has done. So he has just gone ahead and reduced the cost. And uh, what I was reading today is that they're saying we are about to break even. So this stage, you may actually... Uh, and there's also talk about they relaunching it as a as a maybe a payment platform as well, right? So at this stage, you want to rethink of your business model, uh, cut prices, or maybe uh, in 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 their cases they change the model. 
and they start charging the customer for it, whatever was free, right? For that right take, you you have to pay some money. So you need to rejig your model as well. Uh, there are some customers willing to pay. Why not charge that money? Uh, thus, the, at this stage, if the sales is declining and the customer, uh, uh, the, the costs are still uh, still uh, not in control, profits are declining, all of that that stage is where you need to rebuild your product, reimagine your product and go back and say, can I do something differently? Uh, for example, uh, during UPI introduction stage, all wallets realized that they will be in trouble. But some of the wallets actually came back with a different avatar, uh, which is the credit on, on, on wallets, and they did well. And of course, now the new world where uh, digital lending guidelines, GLG, have, has changed uh, the market dramatically. And there's nothing else possible. So uh, I think there's a further uh, damage to the wallet uh, industry. Will it come back in a different avatar? I guess so. Uh, the RBI is also doing a lot of activity of maybe allowing the wallet to be to be intermixed we also seen i personally use wallet because i hate those uh, individual debits in the market in, in the account so a lot of things which market is doing to sort of support it so these are the four four stages we want to talk about which is which is uh, introduction stage intro, uh, growth stage maturity and decline you must visualize yourself in in whatever you are in whatever role you are doing what are you focusing on? Is your product at the maturity stage or decline stage or growth stage and introduction stage? What stage it is in? And uh, largely, if I look at it, uh, the energy levels required at this stage, which is introduction and growth, are dramatically different from what you need to do in, in mature state and, and sort of decline stage. Uh, I think the toughest in this, this case would be the introductory stage and the decline stage. Because in introduction stage, uh, you are actually trying to get into the growth stage. So you are repurposing or uh, you, are, you are refining the product continuously. When it is going through a decline phase, you will actually be doing the same thing all over again, saying that, can I can I bring the life back into this product uh, and sort of scale further, right? So can you think of this thing instead of going down, can I bring it back? So a lot of thought process, a lot of ideas come up uh, at that point, right? So product managers must know what are they touching and why when you shift gears, uh, one of the challenge when uh, you have a, a startup guy joining a, a, maybe a, a, a mature industry like a bank, he and she or he or she will flounder or find challenging is that in, in a mature organization, the, the approval process and all are much more structured and controlled because they don't want to risk the organization with minor changes. So it would take more time and therefore the entrepreneurs who are, uh, who are from introduction stage, early stage, find it difficult uh, or product managers from that stage find it very difficult to adjust to large organization because larger organizations have a slightly different pace because they are, they are dealing with mature products. They are dealing with a, with a uh, large impact if they were to make a mistake. So they will be different, right? So uh, I think I'll, I'll move to the next phase. I hope uh, uh, either, uh, I mean, no questions are getting asked. Hopefully people are able to uh, punch in the questions as well, right? Uh, can you just check that if they are able to punch in this question, right? Otherwise it's possible that they, they are attempting and they're not getting. So let's go through it. Uh, customer centricity, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit uh, from a very, very uh, core, core side of it. Uh, from my heart, okay? Uh, I typically talk from my heart, not from anything else. So I think uh, motor, motor, most, Time when people make mistake, uh, they make mistake when uh, they've never met the customer. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, wherever I go and whatever I do in, on a consulting side, whenever I do or whatever I teach to my my uh, my uh, my friends here, the idea is that you will learn the most from the customer all the time. Now, customer may not know the answer, but meeting the customer uh, gets you to think like him, right? For example. Uh, you you need to have empathy for let's say if you are serving uh, a customer in northeast uh, and uh, you wouldn't know the customer you don't know their traits you don't won't know what their traditions are you won't know the uh, the availability of data availability of mobile and you are expecting him to behave like like the way you are you you behave in 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 bangalore it doesn't work like that so uh, be it northeast be it up be it lucknow be it uh, uh, maharashtra or be it uh, old generation, new generation, age difference, everything can make a difference. So uh, if you have a TG or target group, which you are targeting for, uh, meeting those customers, figuring out what the challenges they have, what are the expression they have from the, from the product, 
why in what cases they will buy your product in what cases you will not buy your product i think this is central to uh, to the theme in which you operate at this point of time uh, i'll i'll give you a bit of a uh, i mean my experience is there so we were trying to solve a problem for uh, for a client in myanmar long back uh, this is a story which is almost like four five years five years back actually so uh, the problem statement was uh, from the from the top management was that we have uh, we have we are taking too much of time for uh, for approving loans for farmers which is i would say more towards 15 days and uh, they were worried that they are taking too much of time and what can we do and the first thing we did in that exercise was that we took the entire uh, top management team including ceo cfo and ceo every every nci or technology everybody out there along with me uh, to the village uh, and and uh, there what we understood we met the customer understood their expectation and then worked backwards from that side saying that okay if customer has applied for loan what happens where is the documentation what is the process what is journey so we went from a customer first perspective for example if the if the loan has to be closed what is the need what is the process we also figured out that how the loans are getting used by the customers you would have given loan for say for for example for buying uh, maybe uh, as a working capital for ms sme so some some activity but the person would have actually bought, bought a livestock now we understood the needs there figured out that maybe there's a need for a livestock product all of that and then went back to the back end and figured out where the, the challenges are what the customer uh, would be how do we communicate uh, for example we were not sending any message to the customer at all in the journey and we started sending alert to them that helped them as well so a lot of things were possible there and, and we came down to more towards two days that and uh, a very differentiated product from a customer experience perspective that myanmar had never seen a sla of two days for offering loans and literally approval will happen in in minutes right in not in days so this is where uh, i think i see uh, uh, eccentricity helps and of course it keeps you humble keeps you really really humble but uh, i think i i saw some questions uh, as well uh, please uh, so rupak singh is asking please go back to decline stage what is the criteria for decline in digital products i think uh, what what do you what do you, do you define criteria it's an interesting question right because uh, uh, one obviously the you will see symptoms right uh, now symptoms can be declining sales uh, customer acquisition cost going through the roof uh, the team getting demotivated because the sales is not happening there will be tons of and maybe the ecosystem would have changed or for competitors is also doing badly there will be lot of symptoms you will see in the market which will make help you in defining but in a broad level uh, and and also i'll be honest so why one side is that right you will see all the symptoms and you will see others also doing the second side is also because uh, where you may have a false alarm and you need to conscious is that what if there is a change in the organization or the mistake made by the by the team or or, or something else which is which is the root cause is incorrect you are your product is right and it should be ideally going up but there is a constraint you have created in the, in, in the product which is not helping you to sell maybe you have overpriced the product or your product is not uh delivered in the right direction or or maybe the quality has gone down so you may need to figure out is it because of a structure in the market and the product is dated and it's no longer valid or is because of internal efficiency inefficiency in reaching out to the market and selling you have to define what but once you understand what it is you need to take action on right so if it is declining sales can you ensure that you rebuild the product and sell all over again repurpose the, the current product or you need to pause and stop it as well so i think decision making is crucial for you to sort of go ahead uh ravi dokno is asking what makes a good versus uh, a great product manager i think good question i am uh, i don't know how to respond back to that uh, i've never thought of good versus great but i think uh, normally what i see is that uh, somebody who is ultra passionate about the product uh, very very close to the customer and has a good understanding of the ecosystem internally externally now i'll say externally because finally product has to be sold and therefore you have to have a good understanding on how content marketing or digital marketing is working because if you don't have an idea about content marketing you would end up increasing the cost so you need to be working for example we are launching a new product in the market 
and we are we are actually working with the content team to ensure that the content is built upfront uh, and and that supports then i have to ensure that the paid marketing which is the performance marketing is well understood and we know need to know the numbers well a lot of times my clients get shocked saying ya tum uska cost kyu bata raha hai mere ko product manager ko cost thodi batana chahiye product position but you need to know otherwise how will you know he should have a good understanding of regulatory needs right so for example we are in a in a in a world where uh, regulations are crucial right in a banking world regulations are extremely crucial and you can't have a situation where you say mujhe to regulation pata hi nahi hai kyun nahi pata you should need to know regulations inside out i would be honest that if a, 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 if you are a, a product manager in banking domain if you don't know regulations you should be fired absolutely fired because you can't say mujhe pata nahi hai mujhe to mujhe to compliance wala pata hai a product manager should know product manager should also know a fair bit of apis so that he can he or she can translate the customer requirement into a brs or brd uh, you in in the initial stage you must write brd yourself even at later stage should be capable to go hands on lot of people as they grow up in life uh, tend to become hands off uh, and i find it bizarre because uh, finding your skill is that now you may say oh at this point i will become a, a more of a people manager look that's how uh, everybody thought maybe 5 10 years back that as you grow you should be off the product but i think my request to you remain close to the product because if you don't know how, with your own hands what is we are building how it will grow you will actually end up becoming a people manager which is a death mindset so for example lot of senior management us and and big guys in the market even ceos are hands on and and that helps in them scaling you have seen the success of startup like that right so that's my pointer i think somebody is asking um, uh, let me see uh, arabi top knows also asking one question how does one move to a pm role if she or she he or she has not done before how does one pivot uh, their career into product management certification training pro bono work i think uh, two two sides of it right uh, one side is that you should read more uh, on product management uh, maybe in whatever role you are so one side is understanding more and you can join our uh, online sessions as well um, uh, and a lot of content is there i think we have done some courses previously as well we'll figure out so this course itself around around that so you should join those read lot of good good documents articles uh, stand out there but also if you are in a in a specific role let's say for example you are in a sales role uh if you do know how the product was built you will be able to have a better empathy and go and have a better interaction with both customers as well as to your your te technology team or operations team so uh, uh first thing if you are no no much read about it and also ensure that you have you you go out of your current role and think better and which means that let's say you go and ask your product team let's say if you are in credit card product and credit card product you are you are you have not met the customer uh, from because you are sitting in, in corporate office go and start meeting your customer uh, understand their requirements and go back to your product manager and negotiate your your services as well saying why can't we do it and then maybe uh, uh, i'm sure the product manager may come back and saying ye to kar hi nahi sakte tech possible nahi then go and talk to the tech guy uh, put your network in figure out it's possible or not try to do benchmarking try to read what others are doing so it's a very natural processing that अरे पता तो करते क्या होता है कैसे होता है एंड यू सडनली विल हैव आंसर्स ना करना बहुत आसान है राइट आई कैन टेल यू दैट वेन एवर बी एज अ प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर वेन एवर यू स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग अरे यार अप्रूवल नहीं मिलेगा टेक में टेक वाला मना कर देगा एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट and you have to find your way through right so i think you have to be bit of a i would say uh, hot uh, not hot basically uh, thick skin right try karo aur daro mat keep keep pushing then only it will happen right so you have to negotiate i remember uh, we were i was trying to negotiate my way through scale up on my mobile banking we didn't have a mobile banking app uh, and i had to work my way through convince the top management with my arguments logics and all interestingly i was not a product manager in that i was actually uh, uh, on the tech tech role but i said it's it's worth doing it and just go ahead and try it and and we launched a product uh, in within few months and it became uh, a decent success right i won't say outright success but very decent success without too much of cost so i think it's up to you how you take your role i could have taken a role as my role as my technology guy and i don't need to bother about it and let somebody bring requirement but you can think differently let me just fix the problem we know that it is slightly outside the boundary so what 
uh, the company needs it and let me do it, right? So I, I think nobody will mind it. Uh, I think one more question which has come is, can we say that fintech company who are at maturity stage are the unicorns in fintech market? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, this is not always the case. Uh, one of the critical element of, of maturity stage is that the product should also start making money. Uh, and uh, in many cases where we were trying to show like a zero the, they have started making money. I think a uh, crucial part of it, if your product is still not making money, uh, you're definitely not at maturity stage. Now you may come back that uh, phone pay is not making money. Are they matured or not? I think uh, I will say at more maturity stage, they're still in growth stage because they're raising more capital, scaling more, but uh, they still have maybe uh, some time away before they stabilize. They're also trying to launch their, their lending business as well. I think uh, all of that is a work in progress. Let's put it like that. Uh, the question from Mitali is, uh, 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 can decline stage come before maturity? Absolutely. If you screw up, it will come, right? For example, uh, let's say, for example, we are in a, in a growth stage. Uh, as, a, as a consulting firm, we are at growth stage. If we, if we make errors, get wrong customers, or, or, or do an assignment which is beyond our skill set, or hire too expensively, we may go into decline stage as well. So uh, I think at any point of time, you from a introductory, you can go to decline. From, from a growth, you can go to decline. Uh, you can do it, right? So, for example, if you have to do an accident, you can do it. If you have to do it, CEO start drinking and forgetting about business, so that's it. So, it can happen before that and that you need to be conscious about it. Okay, so the question comes from another person is, as you mentioned previously, a product manager might have worked in any of the stages of the product, whereas if he goes to a big organization, he should have, should be he accommodated himself or let, try to get into the level of organization from small to medium uh, size company. I think, uh, let me put it like this, you should have a fair idea about what you are intending to do. Uh, you should, I have an idea that how much can I influence? Let's say, for example, uh, one of the things which I realized in my career is that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good for, uh, so I worked in large organization as well. But I'm best when I'm you know mid to small, uh, small to mid side company as well, which is where my I can unleash myself because then I have a lever to play. I can manage a lot of things and take it to scale, right? So I think uh, I I personally am more of a zero to one guy and maybe one to ten guy, but I'm not the best guy for ten to hundred. So it's up to you uh, uh, where you want to be in what scale you want to be. But understanding your your basic what interests you, for example. A, a 10, maybe 5% uh, growth you know, or 20% growth in a year uh, makes you happy or uh, building a new product and, and, and creating a niche makes you happy. I think it's up to you. And I know that a lot of people actually love to, to be in a large organization and, and scale from there. And that's also good, right? Because you would always need people who can take from 10 to 100 over the next five years, 10 years. And that is a, another skill. So, but you wouldn't, you would have seen largely a large uh, company guy coming into a small startup and starting the startup fail a lot of times. A uh, uh, lot of good entrepreneurs, when they join large companies as part of, let's say, acquisition, tend to leave after some time because they find it uh, as a product manager. All, while on, as an entrepreneur, they may find it suffocating, but as a product manager, also I've seen a lot of people finding it very, very um, uh, scary, right? Because they're not used to that many approvals, processes, and all on that. Yeah. Uh, I think Mithali, you were asking what can be the reason for uh, decline. I just told you that uh, if you make mistakes, it will happen. Uh, Siva is asking, do you recommend any book for books for uh, reading? I think good point. Uh, what we will do uh, is that next time I'll, I'll share a set of uh, books which are which may be useful for you to pick it up. Uh, I'll come back with a set of books. Uh, I do read fair amount of books, but I also know that a lot of knowledge comes from executing right uh, and, and getting customer experience as well. So some of the content which I talk about may be uh, more from experience than, than just theory. I think Manan is asking, how is a product manager different from a customer success manager? Or is one just a subset or other basis the job description? So Manan, um, customer success manager can be, uh, I mean, I let me answer the question from a, uh, B2B perspective, right? Uh, now, in a B2B business, uh, I'm assuming customer success manager is focusing more on one or set of customers, whereas product manager is catering to, with his product, with 
uh, getting to multiple customers, right? So a customer success manager's job is to get the implementation done and support done in B2B business. Whereas the job of a product manager is to, is to build a product which can be sold to multiple customers and can be implemented there. So I think customer success manager will do similar stuff, but only for some one customer. And he may also have a limited change in the product possible. So product he has got, and he is actually implementing for the customer or supporting one customer and assuring that customer's requirements are taken back to product. So my sense is that uh, both of them will have, have to work together, but for every one product, uh, so customer success manager may be working with multiple product managers for because the customer may be using multiple products from the same company. Similarly, product manager will be working with multiple uh, 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 sort of customer success uh, of player uh, or customer success manager from multiple com multiple companies because uh, they will be implementing from those customers, right? So, dono mein overlapping hoga, but uh, uh, both have a different and complicated role. I have played. Uh, customer success role and I know that it was also tough because you are under pressure from that client to get your work done whereas you may not be getting support from the product as well. Uh, let's see what else Aditi Kapoor is asking will revenue model or business model have a role to play in the decline stage of fintech? Uh, will they have to be modified? I think uh, it is right for example you you may have a revenue model um, uh, where the pricing is, is kept on increasing. Uh, and, and for example, what happened in, in, uh, in the case of Zoom and in case of all the digital products, uh, their pricing actually shot up during COVID period, right? Because there was demand was very high. And they all went through a plummeting side because uh, the pricing was not too for and the usage all, also went in. So pricing has an issue, uh, which can have a problem. Also business model, right? For example, uh, which, which customer to target, how do which channel to use? All of that is crucial, right? For example, uh, 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 when you let's say, for example, you may have a very top end product, but now that you know that you are you are competing with other guys in the market who are offering it much cheaper and sort of taking the market away, you may have to relook at your market uh, and, and 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 profit making and saying maybe I'll also be a volume player instead of a niche player. So pricing has an issue, model has an issue. Whom to to reach out to? What is the value proposition? How do you communicate the message? The 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 way your website contains it, the, everything will 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 be crucial for it, right? So, uh, technically, uh, revenue model and and business model has got to play. Uh, and a uh, lot of times, for example, you want to scale too hard, and you say, "I will make money later. Let me scale hard too hard," and you may not get funds anymore, right? So, uh, I won't name a company which is which has been sort of acquired and then not acquired and all that <laughs> because of the rapid scale. It has gone into define uh, uh, to 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 this problem because you may run out of money. So product may be good, but this is an interesting part. Your product may be good and very 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 relevant, but it needs too much of money and it's not breaking even at at all, right? So it may have a different loop saying product sahi hai, customer ko chahiye, but you are not able to price it right because it it has to be sold and pushed. It's too difficult for customer to take. How to take more uh, informed decision around product enhancements? I think personally, most of uh, the times product managers do not look at the metrics. Key. For example, we are we are right now working on dramatic improvement in a product for our client, right? So we are offering right to the customer and we have a, maybe a two or three products already built. But they're built not for ultra scale. They're not built for ultra scale. Therefore, when you are now scaling up, we are taking informed decision. If we do this, what are the three outcomes we'll have? And therefore, we are going to prioritize only those items which are one have a high impact on the customer. Second, it has a high impact on employees, and third, it has a high impact on the overall engagement in the market. Right. So we need to define what we are looking at. It's a top line growth or a bottom line growth. What is the metrics, and then take this. And otherwise, kya hota hai? Aapne, for example, uh, for a tech enhancement, you have spent maybe twenty lakh rupees or fifty lakh rupees, or maybe next. Six sprints are focused on something, but nobody is looking at the business impact and product improvement, right? So we say, "Ha, ye feature chahiye. Kisko chahiye? Kyo chahiye? What is the benefit around that?" I think that has to be defined as well. So I would put it like that: it has to be a lot of data based, and of course, a lot of experience based as well. Not everything is told by data, right? You may not have data. You are also always, as a product manager, you are you are also visionary. You are thinking in future. Ye demand hogi market mein to ye banata hoon. Uh, how important it is important it is to know various AI tools for product managers? Is it 
different for large organization traditional uh, products versus small startups so i think uh, i'll put it like ai tools in a slightly uh, simpler method right so uh, let me put it 5 years back uh, all the ai tools was nonsense right uh, the way you were uh, uh, people were uh, sort of uh, wasting everybody's time talking about random thing about blockchain Uh, same thing was a random thing about ai ml right kisi bhi cheez ke samne ai ml laga do aapke paas customer nahi hai but you are saying my underwriting is depending on 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 ai ml but there is no customer data right kya panch customer ko loan diya sabne jhoot bola okay but in the current realm of things things are completely changed ai tools are relevant we know that customer experiences are changing because of ai ml tools while chat gpt may be just a symptom which is appearing what appears to be the case is a dramatic shift in the baseline right so aaj duniya badal rahi hai waqt badal raha hai and ai if you don't know for example personally me i i'm not a big expert on ai ml at all i'm not and i i i am not proud of it but i it's a fact but am i learning about it i am telling you that it is something which is not core to me that if i do not understand and me and my team does not go deep enough into analytics and ai ml we may not be existing maybe after 3 to 5 years and therefore to the extent ai ml is critical part of it so for example we are working with a client and we are building products uh, for them and ai ml and uh, 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 analytics is core part of building that company right core part and that's why therefore we are very heavy on thinking kya kar sakte hai kaise kar sakte hai what data you use what are the methods of uh, analytics we can use what are the methods of Uh, what are the ai ml toolkits and tools which we can use for it what are we missing right what skills are we missing so we are thinking like that i think the question was on agile uh, development tools you should need to know that i think as a as a product manager you need to know what tools to be used ab mere ko jira use nahi karta kyun nahi karte yaar karna padega you need to have a fair idea about what tools are there deployed on 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 this side on agile side and you need to use it there's no other way i mean for example uh, as a product manager if you don't know how to use a uh, visily or a figma you're wasting everybody's time right i i remember in my time when i was drawing i could i would put it on a on a ppt put all the frameworks and give it that that entire stuff you are in a new world things are much much easier much much easier right you can actually pick any of the thought process directly right you can actually uh, pick it up right so uh, i i think uh, i keep talking so one of the request i have is that please uh, share your feedback on the session uh, the link is there um, and uh, as a response to that uh, we will share this deck back to you all of those guys who will actually give a feedback uh, we will share this deck itself for you for your own consumption uh, so i think a uh, lot of people look at that data but i will share it back to you um, let me come back right uh, let me answer something else uh, what are the ways of getting into a big uh, company from a smaller medium size companies any specific channels or mediums are uh, i think uh, i don't know how to answer that we also help uh, uh, in people in getting placed uh, but i don't know how to answer that it's very specific to your requirements i don't know if you'll you will fit in that role or not i don't know but the way you do obviously apply to the right channels we may be also one of the channel uh, as well right so we have a lot of web, i mean our uh, you guys i mean one request i have is uh, maybe i'll also try to share with you guys um uh Uh, a whatsapp group which we run where you potentially can join and learn more uh, as well right uh, as a pm which space is better b2c or b2b for beginner i think it's up to you uh, i am a b2b guy i love doing b2b guy uh, i am not actually b2b to c guy i love doing uh, uh, work for msme and retail and corporate all three ways but uh, i am not a guy who actually will do direct work for the customer right so i think it's up to you what you like and what you love um, i think i really don't have an answer uh for what you should do but look at your dna uh what you like you like interacting with companies and solving for their problems uh, or you love solving for retail customers problems it's up to you uh i i love solving for retail customer but i'm not the best guy uh in 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 working directly with them so we i do tend to work differently there but it's up to you i i find a lot of people who are want love doing directly b2 b2c business let me attempt to close on last one one question maybe um no anyway, i think i'll i'll run out of time uh, but uh, thank you guys i think uh, my request is um let's pick up all the other questions i've not able to answer two questions which are still left uh, we were to we were to handle a session also on on customer centricity 
my apologies uh, we ran out of time but i i can i can vouch for it we will come back uh, and and sort of um, I, I i will i'll ensure that next session we will take we'll take care of it we will give you a view on what what a, what a customer centricity is how does it work what you can do and how you can plan this out so i'll definitely do that i will also share a link uh, to our 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 whatsapp group where uh, we share sort of uh, a lot of insights and uh, ideas so this this tech itself will be publicly available in that group in many times so i'm sharing the link if you guys are interested in joining our group please go ahead and do it uh, you can also uh, uh, come to our our youtube uh, channel as well it's called the digital fifth um, so maybe just to give you a view um, maybe i'll try to see if i can show it to you let me see if i can show it to you yeah so if you go to youtube uh, and you search for the digital fifth you will find our material there similarly the previous session you also you can find in the recent recent videos uh, so you can find uh, this uh, last one session last session we did few few days back uh, where we had done basics of product management you can see here you can also subscribe the session as well for your own consumption uh, with this we pause uh, thank you guys for joining us i please do give us your feedback uh, and we will be very very happy to work on it uh, we are next session which is coming up is 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 going to be uh, again on on next two session will be on product management and we'll follow it up with more session on digital banking and entrepreneurship if you are interested in 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 any of uh, this product management so if you want to train your product your team on product management or you would want to ask to run your product management we run product management practice or or strategy for uh, quite a number of organizations you want to work with us for the, for that we would love to work with you thank you and uh, maybe uh, you can reach out to us um, over over uh, let's say i i'm dropping your mail email id if you guys want to reach out to me for any requirement any need please let me know uh, we'll work on it thank you guys um, i'm just dropping my email id you can guys can pick it up uh, and we'll work with you thank you guys we'll meet again see you bye bye